this is Mari Lane from the Buying Space channel. I'm continuing my series on diabetes. In front of you, you see a very nice cigar box. And you might wonder, why in the world does Myra have a cigar box? Because she's talking about diabetes. Insulin, I live in Florida, and there's a great deal of humidity. And these boxes protect cigars from heat and humidity so they would also protect your insulin from extreme temperatures so that's why I use a cigar box to hold my insulin vials and um, my other um, diabetic supplies now this is a milky insulin this is Humulin N, and the N is for long. L O N G is the second letter from the last, and with the short for the humulin. R, the next to the last letter. That's what that means. If you take uh, humulin, that's the distinction between. The long and the short. Now I'm going to test my blood sugar first before I do anything else. And before I do that, usually I wash my hands, but uh, if you're in a pinch, you can use hand sanitizer. Put way too much hand sanitizer on. <laughs> And with vials, you use syringes. This is a 50 unit syringe or half a cc. And this is a whole 100 unit syringe. And hopefully, my blood sugar is under control. And we'll be able to just use two syringes today. I think that all diabetics should have a couple of vials or a couple of insulin pins um, as backup if they have a more advanced system. If they have the uh, pod or any kind of pod system that reach your blood sugar and automatically dispenses insulin into your system. Sometimes those systems malfunction, batteries go dead, you run out of the pod insulin. So you should have this or pins as a backup. And if you start out with an advanced system that's connected to your body, you should learn about injecting the old-fashioned way. See the 25 came up on the screen and here's the matching number on the vial, or not vial, container of test strips. Let's look at that again. Okay, put the test strip in. And then the number that pops up should match the number on the bottle of test strips. So here we go. This is a Lancet device. I've already put hand sanitizer on. Uh, if I'd washed my hands five minutes ago, I would go ahead and open one of these. In fact, I am going to go ahead and open one of these. And clean the area. And then I press the button. I pop this back. And then I squeeze. Yep, it's going to be one of those mornings. I'm having to squeeze pretty hard to get a blood droplet to put on the end of the test strip.
Oh, that went in there slowly. I might get an error. Okay. My blood sugar is over 600. So it will not show on the meter. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this finger off. Now, I can only assume 600. I can't know for sure what the true amount of my blood sugar is. So what I'm going to do is first thing is I'm going to go ahead and shoot up my um, long term, which is 80 units. Or 100, excuse me. I was on the pins. I was on 80 units. So, I'm pretty unhappy with myself right now. But I've had some other health conditions and a lot of stress, and it drives my blood sugar up. This has a hundred units in it, and this is the long term. There's not a lot left in this bottle. I am going to go ahead, and um, it's a pretty large needle. They make them that are way smaller than this. You put your plunger, you insert your needle. And you put the amount of air in the bottle that you're going to take out. So you pull the plunger. Now this vial is kind of empty, or getting near empty. So this is a little more, more difficult this morning. My dexterity, as you can imagine, is suffering from having... Um, such a high blood sugar. So I've pulled that down there. Now I pull this straight up so I don't bend the needle. It's really important you don't bend your needle. Okay, now it's a little awkward. I got a granny gown on so I cannot show you my insertion because anyway, <laughs> I don't have pants on. So anyway, I want to do is I pinch and I insert the needle about an inch and a half from my belly button. This one I'm going to do on the right. Pull it, push it in a 90 degree angle, pull it straight out at the same angle. Now um, I'm going to take this plunger and I'm going to store it separately because what happens is sometimes our landfill waste ends up in Mexico City and places in Asia where children go through the trash. So, and sometimes they're prompted to sell this kind of stuff. I mean, even in the United States, you don't want the, this to be reusable. So I bend the needle down and I store the plungers and the syringes in different containers. The plunger can actually be put in the regular trash. So that way they're separated and bend the needle so it can't be reused. Now, with my short term, my short term is titrated. Uh, usually I have a base of 50. And, um, but when your sugar is higher than 200, you start to add the amount of insulin you take. So in order to um, get the right amount of insulin, I have to do math. I have to do math when my blood sugar is high. So here we're going to give this a try. So for every 50 units 
I am above 150, I need to add two units of insulin. So here we go, 150 to 200, 200 to 250, 250 to 300, 300 to 350, 350 to 400, 400 to 450, 450 to 500, 500 to 550, 550 to 600. So that's nine times that I'm 50 units above normal. Nine, I guess we could call them segments. And for each one of those, I need to take two. So that's 18. Then I would add 50. So that's 68 units. So this is only oh, has 50 units in it. So I have to use two. So instead of using um, 50 on one and um, the 18 on the other, I'm going to divide it in half. So with 68 units, that would be 34 units in each. And also, unfortunately, because my sugar is way out of control, I do have to use two syringes. The 100 unit syringes only have a few left. So I was looking at only being able to use these anyway. So that was already three shots just with the long term having to be divided up. Now this, for some reason, doesn't have a plunger cover. I don't really like that. But this top, orange top, comes off. And these are quite uh, long as well. Usually uh, the standards for pin needles, or excuse me, syringes, have gotten a lot better. And if I miss say a word, remember, my blood sugar is over 600 at this moment. So I'm going to push the needle down into the vial. Push in the air. Actually, it was more air than um, needed. And then I'll bring it out and then bring it back to 34. So there it's at 34. I'm going to pull this straight up and I'm going to shoot this up inch and a half with my belly button on my left side. Now, when I take this apart, that goes in there. Now, this has a really neat safety feature. You push this up, and it covers the end of the needle. I still want to, you know, go ahead and take it and break it in half or bend it, but, uh, you know, that safety feature is on there. I guess I could bend it and then push it up, but then it wouldn't be in the cap, which the cap is the whole reason you would um, push up anyway. So here we go, 34, insert needle, push in air, flip, pull plunger down, to 34 or wherever spot you're supposed to have absolutely all of your insulin dosages should be regulated by your doctor and then I'm going to do this inch and a half above my belly button now sometimes I will uh, stick to a clock formation around my belly button But in, um, and you can do that. You can use um, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, twelve o'clock. Problem is, um, you should, after you use those four, you should 
move along two fingers away from your last insertion. So if you use the same spot over and over, it's not good for your skin. And you can actually get infections uh, by doing that. So now that I've shot up, and since since I'm such a, a um, excuse me, i got to use this on my stomach, um, to clean up afterwards and it prevent said infections. What I do at this point is um, use the 15 minute rule and I'm going to check my sugar again in 15 minutes. Now if it's still high, 